It's actually kind of weird. Being a European, I've never been to this part of the world. I've never been to the Balkans. I was never in ex-Yugoslavia before the war, and uh, I've never been in this country. It's a very touristy place. It's a place that gets probably the most tourists of the Balkan countries. I'm starting in the south, and then I'm heading north. Right now, I'm in Split, Croatia, and this is the Radio Vagabond podcast. Meet Pala Bo, a full-time traveler and digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. This is the Radio Vagabond. Before I continue, let me mention that this episode is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels and guest houses and hostels around the world. Hotels25.com searches a bunch of the big hotel search sites in one simple search. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. When I told the world that I was going to split, a lot of people said that I should make sure that I visit the island of Havar, H-V-A-R. It's one of the islands that's off the coast of uh, Split, and it should be extremely beautiful out there. The the trip out there and uh, the island itself should be beautiful. So I booked a ticket. I'm going uh, in a few hours, in th- three, three and a half hours, and then I'm heading back uh, tonight. So I'm going to be spending um, three, four hours on the island, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay. You want? No, it's because I I have to get a boat at two o'clock, but I have some time in between. Uh, yeah, they they make a group in like maybe hour. Yeah. And so I can have some yeah. breakfast okay. first, and uh, you want to go? So you right now I'm in the old town of uh, of Split, and uh, just ordered breakfast, and in um, an hour's time I'm going on a walking tour of Split. Hopefully, I will get to know more about this city. Travel is possible at any age. Your sense of adventure is just over the horizon. So, reach out and grab it. This is the Radio Vagabond. Gotta keep moving. I haven't introduced myself. Uh, my name is Yasenka, or you may call me Mrs. Blackford. And I'm really genuine. From here, my house is 500 years old. Let me recap my Balkan road trip so far. I started in Albania, then I went to Kosovo, Montenegro, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and now I've arrived to Croatia. If you haven't heard the other episodes from this region, I suggest that you go back and do that too. Croatia is a country in southern Europe with a fascinating history, culture, and a lot of incredible outdoor attractions and historical monuments. The capital is Zagreb, and the official language is Croatian. That is not that different to some of the other languages in ex-Yugoslavia, I've been told, and I take their word for it. Unlike Kosovo and Montenegro, they don't have euro here. Their currency is kuna, even though they are a member of the European Union, something that the two other countries are not. They became a member in 2013, and that makes Croatia the newest member of the EU. And some of the other countries here in this region are a bit jealous of that. Both North Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia and Albania have applied for it, but still not accepted. With a population of around 4 million, and an area of 56 square kilometers, this is a small country, slightly bigger than my home country Denmark, and a bit smaller than Ireland. They share borders with Hungary, Serbia, Montenegro, Slovenia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And not far away, just across the Adriatic Sea, you'll find Italy. In a few minutes you'll get some fun facts, but now let's get back to the small streets of Split, where I'm about to go on a free walking tour. The entire old town here in Split is is actually what used to be a castle uh, with a big wall around it, and uh, now it's a it's a small city with uh, old houses and uh, narrow streets. And uh, we've been walking around doing a, a guided tour. At at some point, we got into um, a place where they filmed 
some of the scenes from Game of Thrones, uh, the part where, with the dragons. And inside, there's it's like a, a small hole in the in the floor where there's some clean water and, and a few coins being thrown down there. And uh, a guy uh, walks past the barrier and, and sits uh, squatting, uh, throwing some water in his face. And one of the guards comes up to him and says, you can't do that, you... you you need to move out and they they start speaking to each other uh, loudly and uh, in the end he throws some some water in the face of the the, the guard and uh, leaves but then he comes back shouting even more and uh, being very angry I was told that uh, he he said stop shouting at me you embarrass me in in front of these people and and uh, uh, and then he in the end he he knocked over uh, a part of the fence um, and was really really loud and really angry Our guide told me that uh, maybe it was it was part of the uh, the scars from from the war. A lot of people they still have uh, post traumatic stress, and uh, and that's maybe why he reacted the way he he did. And she told me that he was shouting, uh, "Why do you embarrass me in front of these people? I wasn't doing anything wrong." Pardon? Was he, shouting in there? Uh, he was shouting on them because they were, they said you embarrass me in front of the guests. Uh, I haven't done any harm. Why did you shout on me in front of the guests? Because I told them, don't shout on this man. Please, we have uh, people here. He understood. I think he just wanted to show off a little bit, make a show. <laughs> you can see pictures, videos and links and read much more on the radiovagabond.com. Now I'm standing in line, uh, getting ready to board the the boat, the catamaran that's going to take me to the island of Juan. I would love to hear from you, and now there's a new and very simple way for you to send me a voice message. It's a cool little web-based app called Telby, and all you need to do is click on the banner on the radiovagabond.com where it says "Talk to me," and then just talk. Tell me where you are and what you're doing while you're listening to this. It's super simple and one of the cool things is that you can listen to it and redo it if you're not happy with it before you click send. Please, please try that. I get a small sound bite that I can play here on the show and it's always wonderful to hear from you guys. You can, of course, also fill out the form under contact on the website. This is The Radio Vagabond. The island of Hvar is called the Queen of the Croatian Dalmatian Islands. Thanks to the mild climate, the warm winters and pleasant summers, Hvar receives many guests every year. According to warinfo.com, we're attracted by the dense Mediterranean nature, a rich tradition and history, beautiful architecture and the nightlife. The boat arrived to Stari Grad, it's the oldest town in Croatia, dating back to 384 BC, when the Greeks settled here on the island and named it Pharos. Now it's called Stari Grad, which means old town, and it's in a landscape where the deep blue bay touches the green of the fields with vineyards and olive groves. I spent three to four hours walking around in the hilly streets of Stari Grad, browsing through the many small shops on the pier and having a nice lunch. A bit overpriced though, since this is a very touristy place. This is an island that might be worth spending more time on, since it has so much more to offer than just Stari Grad. Okay, time for fun facts about Croatia. And now... Facts about, where we are. Facts about where we are. You might think that this is a new country after the breakup of uh, Yugoslavia, but they've been a country before. In the year 878, Croatia was internationally recognized as an independent state. 46 years later, they became a kingdom and maintained its sovereignty for two centuries. 
Croatia has more than 1,200 islands off the coast of the mainland, but only 48 are inhabited. The city of Dubrovnik, in the southern part of Croatia, had one of the first medieval sewer systems in Europe. And speaking of Dubrovnik, this was the main film location for King's Landing in Game of Thrones. Splits, where I am right now, was also used as one of the film locations. Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia in the northern region of Lika. Croatia is one of the greenest countries in the world. The country is home to 11 nature parks, 8 national parks and 2 nature reserves. And, according to Alfred Hitchcock, the city of Sadar has what he called the most beautiful sunset in the world, more beautiful than the one in Key West, Florida. And that was Facts About Where We Are. And Sadar is my second stop in Croatia. I have to see if good old Alfred was right. Other things Sadar has going for it is that it's a region rich in history and beautiful nature and still relatively undiscovered. Here you can wander the quiet streets of marble and enjoy cheaper prices than in the southern part of the country in Split and Dubrovnik. If you come from Europe, Ryanair and EasyJet flies directly to the city. The best spot to watch that sunset, Hitchcock named the most beautiful sunset in the world, with a drink in hand, is Café Brasil, close to the Monument of the Sun. This monument is a 22 diameter circle with 300 multi-layer glass plates placed in the same level as the stone paved waterfront with solar modules underneath. There are lightning elements installed in it that turn on at night and produce a beautiful light show. It's like a giant solar powered public dance floor. What makes this attraction even cooler is that they have plans to refurbish it and make it interactive so you will actually be able to dance across this sun, as they call it, and see the lights respond to your movements. There's another creative attraction next to the monument, the Sea Organ. It's an art installation formed by cleverly cutting steps into a section of the concrete waterfront promenade. These have underwater pipes that makes them play musical notes when they are filled with water and create a harmonica effect that almost sounds as if each wave is gently sighing. It's the plan to have the lights on the Sun Monument correspond with the sounds created by the sea organ, all while watching this beautiful sunset. A short ferry ride away from Sadar is Saharan, one of the country's best beaches. It's white sand, which actually is unusual for Croatia, and the turquoise shallow waters makes it comparable to the Caribbean, and it's actually quite undiscovered. Outside of July and August, there are not that many people here. Let's keep it a secret, so don't tell anyone. Inside Sadar's ancient walls, you'll find a handful of great fish restaurants side by side, with more reasonable prices compared to those further down the coast and also a lot of great bars so in order to do my job and emerge into the local culture I wandered into one of them I took a seat at the bar and all of a sudden I found myself chatting away with a few of the locals I think some of them had been there a few hours I asked them if I could record a bit and took out my microphone or as one of them called it my apparatura I brought the apparatura here. And uh, so guys, here we are in the best cafe in uh, Sadar, and uh, and uh, and uh, we're we're all having a drink, and uh, somebody's eating, and. Uh, and and we're anything having a want, we're, 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 like, we're having a good time. So can anybody say what is the best thing about living in Croatia? 
što je najbolje koja je najbolja stvar je najbolja što stvar? živiš u Croatian? Da. E, more. Si. si. More. E, Boeing out. Gadro. <laughs> A jebi ga sad. Ne, nismo zasrali, ništa. He said the, the best is uh, sea and uh, party, Climate. going outside, uh, zabava, uh, fun uh, outside. And uh, uh, klima, 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 yeah. klima, klima je, you know, to je... You have absolutely better weather than we have in Denmark. Yeah, we have uh, better, yeah. Be- better weather than Denmark. Yeah. Uh, the best thing of uh, all things is that we all chill. We chill people. You chill. A little yes. bit drink, a little bit uh, eat, a little right. bit uh, smoke, and that's all. But what are what are some of the challenges that uh, this country has? Na što bi trebali raditi? To je sa pitanje. Trebali bi raditi na... Trebali bi manje krasti. He said that we have, uh, this government have less stolen money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so vladajući, vladajući, yeah. vladajući. So you're uh, saying, you're saying corruption? Ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. Korupcija. A stvarno nema volje, ja kad ima volje, ja bi... A nema, ja pojma, ja bi sad njemu sve... Kao yeah, this uh. war. Ha, ne znam, ne znam što... It's bude. very complex. Yeah. Uh, Our politician uh, is very corruptive, is very... Uh, ajme, brate, ne, <laughs> ne znam što prika više. Mm. This is for politicians. Not, oh yeah. Not, not, not okay. For, uh, okay. Not, a question not. for all of you guys: If you all won a million euros in the big lotto jackpot, what would you do? What would you do? Uh, I will go in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> in ba- Bangkok, Bangkok, <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> to have some fun. <laughs> You're all just smiling at me now. <laughs> and I'm trying to ask a serious question. <laughs> you guys... You can come area to talk about serious things. <laughs> okay, let's just have a good time. Gotovo gas, yo! And then they asked me to stop recording, to get back to drinking. If you want a serious conversation, you have to come earlier in the day, they said. As I was going back to my guest house, I ordered an Uber. The driver's name is Marco, and just by pure coincidence, I've been driving with him earlier in the day. He's super nice and didn't mind talking, and he was sober. So I thought I'd get his perspective on the country. So Marco, uh, what's the best thing about living in Croatia? Well... First of all, I would like to mention that night uh, lifestyle is pretty, I would say, you know, easy going. It's safe. Uh, people are nice. Country is beautiful. Uh, well, there are also some bad things, but I would say it's a nice place for living. What are some of the things that needs improvement? Well, definitely we have a we have a bad economy compared to some compared to some other countries uh, in the in the EU. But um, it's not that easy to get a job to find a job, appropriate job. We have a lot of young people who are just leaving the country and yeah. going out in Ireland, Germany. Last uh, last year we had a uh, fifty thousand of young people who just left. So that's something we should we should work on it. But my impression coming from the outside, when I, I've been to some of the other countries in ex-Yugoslavia, and, uh, yeah. and, and I would say that uh, you have more things in order, or is that wrong? Well, that's actually right. We are definitely, we are most likely better than countries like maybe Bosnia or Serbia or Montenegro. But in my opinion, we should compare ourselves with some other countries in in Europe like you know Germany or yeah. France or yeah. whatever so in terms of corruption I would say that there is a lot of corruption definitely we are right now we are in the middle of a huge scandal uh, it doesn't matter what it is but it's a huge scandal so there is definitely a lot of corruption but, but there's no there's no rigging of elections the elections are completely fair well, 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think so. I would like to think so, yeah. yeah. But you're born and raised here. Yeah, I am, yeah. If you if you won a Brazilian a billion uh, uh, kuna in, in the lottery, what would you do? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> That's a hard question. That's a question I like to ask people yeah. around the world because it, I never get the same answer. Oh, it's hard to say. I may say one thing now, but once it happens, I would probably do something completely different. So, I, I don't know. I guess I would just run away for one year, you know? <laughs> Think about it, see what I can do. Yeah, yeah but what, what, what do you have to do if you, if you have so much money? Yeah. There's nothing you, are, you have to do, so I don't know. So if, if you could travel to any country in the world, where would you go? Uh, right now, at this moment, I would go for, uh, oh, maybe Iceland. Oh. Yeah. But it's so cold. No, I think it's not that bad. I think it's much worse in Greenland. Which is actually weird because Greenland is like it's supposed to be green. But oh, it's actually yeah, too but cold. that's that's all the marketing's done done yeah, by the Danish yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I think Iceland is not that bad. No. At least in some parts of the year. So. No, and they have some hot water. Yeah, they do definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been at the airport uh, on a winter's day, and I, all I saw was snow. But uh, oh, yeah. I can't wait to go to to Iceland and, yeah. and well, explore the island. Well, I'm definitely planning to go there. Yeah, in Iceland. So that, that's one of the plans. That's one of the countries, but. Uh, as I mentioned last time, I was in New Zealand for one year, but and it's a really beautiful country, it's really nice. So, my other, my next destination is more like yeah. I've had three Uber rides, and two of them have been with you, and it's been... Yeah, that's <laughs> Thank actually, you. That's so, actually really weird, because yeah. there is like hundreds of Uber yeah, drivers. Yeah, exactly. So, that's and, coincidence. And what are the odds? Yeah. But tomorrow morning, I'm, I'm going uh, to the bus station mm -hmm. and uh, calling an Uber, so I might see you again. Well, <laughs> it's possible, definitely it's possible, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. This episode is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels around the world. Hotels25.com And like I said to Marco, my Uber driver, uh, tomorrow I'm going to Ljubljana in Slovenia and I'm so looking forward to that. My name is Palavo and I gotta keep moving. See ya! Produced by Radio Guru. .co.uk